aminoglycosides. Here are some examples of aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides are obtained from soil actinomyces. Have you ever wondered why some aminoglycosides like streptomycin, canamycin are MYCIN whereas others like gentamicin, cisomycin are MICIN. It is based on the type of actinomycetes from which these drugs are obtained. Streptomycin canamycin are obtained from streptomyces whereas gentamicin cisomycin are obtained from micromonospora. And there are some drugs like amicacin, framycetin and arabic acid which are semi-synthetic. Chemically aminoglycosides are polybasic amino groups linked glycosidically to two or more amino sugars. Aminoglycosides are polar polycations. They are highly charged molecules and this gives them unique pharmacokinetic properties. They are not absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. That's why they can be given only parenterally. Since they remain in the extracellular fluid because they cannot enter into the cells because of their polar nature, they have a very small volume of distribution. They have very less plasma protein binding and being polar they are exclusively excreted by the kidneys by glomerular filtration. Let's try to understand bacterial protein synthesis before we delve into the mechanism of action of aminoglycosides. This is the messenger RNA of the bacteria. I have drawn three colons here just for representative purpose C1, C2 and C3. C1 is a start codon. This is the shine delgano sequence which is upstream of the start codon C1. The bacterial 30S ribosome identifies the shine delgano sequence and attaches to the messenger RNA in such a way that the start codon C1 is in the right position in the bacterial ribosome for protein synthesis. Next, the 50S ribosome attaches, completing the polysome formation. Please note that the 50S ribosome has an E site, that is the exit site, a P site, that is peptidyl site, where the growing peptide chain attaches, and an A site, that is the acceptor site, where the new amino acid attaches. The bacterial initiator tRNA, the one you are seeing in this red is the initiator tRNA, brings the first amino acid, usually N-formylmethionine, complementary to the C1 codon and this attaches at the peptidyl site or the P site. Following the attachment of A1 to the peptidyl site, a new amino acid A2 is brought by a new tRNA which is complementary to the codon C2. Now this A2 attaches at the acceptor site. Now there is a peptide bond formation between the amino acid A1 and A2 following which A1 is transferred to A2. Now the peptidyl site is free and both amino acids are in the A site. Following this the ribosome move forward by one codon. The initiator tRNA now exits from the 50S ribosome and now you can see that the growing peptide chain is at the peptidyl site and the A site is free. A new amino acid A3 is now brought at the acceptor site by a new tRNA. Before accepting any amino acid at the acceptor site, there is always something called as proofreading that goes on to check whether the codons of the messenger RNA and that of the incoming tRNA is complementary. If it is complementary, the acceptor site accepts the new amino acid and this process goes on until the tRNA encounters a stop codon. 
after which the protein synthesis stops. Mechanism of action of aminoglycosides. Aminoglycoside enters the periplasmic space via porin channels. And once in the periplasmic space, they enter inside the cell with the help of oxygen. So it's an oxygen dependent process via which the aminoglycoside enters inside the cell. That's why these group of drugs are only active against aerobic bacteria. They have synergistic action with penicillins and other cell wall inhibitors because they aid entry of these drugs inside the cell. Once inside the cell, the aminoglycosides bind to the 30S ribosome and block initiation and polysome formation. They also cause misreading of the codon and incorporate wrong amino acids causing premature chain termination and sometimes abnormally long peptide chains and thus block further translation process. So basically aminoglycosides are protein synthesis inhibitors. Despite being protein synthesis inhibitors, aminoglycosides are bactericidal, probably due to altering of cell membrane permeability. Aminoglycosides show a property of concentration dependent killing, which means higher the plasma concentration of the drug, more of bacteria is killed rapidly. The other property is post antibiotic effect, which means the bactericidal action is present even when the plasma concentration of the drug is below the minimum inhibitory concentration. This is the plasma concentration time graph for aminoglycoside. This red line represents the level for toxicity. That means if the drug concentration is above this level, there is always a risk for toxicity. Imagine if the drug is given as a thrice daily regimen. You can note that the drug level remains above the toxicity level for most of the time. But if the drug is given as a single or once daily regimen, you can note that for most of the time, the drug level remains below the toxicity level. That's the importance of giving aminoglycoside as a single large morning dose so that the toxicity due to this drug can be avoided. Though aminoglycosides have a relatively short duration of action, these drug can be given as a once daily regime because of the property of concentration dependent killing and post antibiotic effect. Mechanism of resistance of aminoglycosides. The most important mechanism is phosphorylation, adenylation or acetylation of the drug decreased affinity to ribosomal protein and impaired transport of the drug inside the cell. Drug toxicities include nephrotoxicity, autotoxicity and neuromuscular blockade. The main contraindication to the drug include pregnancy because it can cause autotoxicity in the newborn baby. To summarize, these are the five points I would like you to remember about aminoglycosides. These drugs are highly polar and hence given only parenterally. They are bactericidal and protein synthesis inhibitors. They are mainly active against aerobic gram-negative bacteria. They cause nephrotoxicity, autotoxicity and neuromuscular blockade. They have the property of post-antibiotic effect and concentration dependent killing.